Please don't pretend that this is completely normal. D did I call her fat? I did. Ugly, talentless, and I'm committed, frightened, lonely, nervous. I felt quite bullied. Yeah, we came together. Did you really? Yeah, right. Is there something we ought to know? And he was sort of glowing and golden and just beautiful. I just wanted to run away. We come now to a phenomenon called Titanic. I actually kept a diary on that film. It's locked in a safe. That's Stuff in what it. She thinks. Oh no, no, no. Kate wrote in her diary. Oh no, I do not believe this. It's so funny the things that people say. Still as beautiful and radiant <laughs> as she was the day I met her. Leo, I'm so happy I can tell you how much I love you and how much I've loved you for 13 years. I remember you actually saying to me one day, you've really got to let the whole fat girl thing go. It's in the past, honey, you've got to let it go. Okay, well, this is horrible and I hope it passes. Well, everybody wanted to see the two of you together. It must have been difficult. I found it difficult and Leo didn't, which really annoyed me. Why is that? When I met him in a hotel room, initially I thought, oh, how am I going to work with this beautiful man? To stand alongside him so just to watch him perform was just overwhelming. Kate loved to act but she felt like she wasn't pretty enough to succeed. I was always comparing myself to others. You see I've been bullied at school. They called me blubber. They teased me for wanting to act. I was sort of made to feel ashamed of of myself, my appearance. And I was even told that I might be lucky in my acting if I was happy to settle for the fat girl part. But I did always love acting. I could literally close my bedroom door and just go on ahead and do it in the mirror if I felt like it. I was 17 and working in a delicatessen part-time and I remember receiving the phone call from my agent whilst I was literally making like a turkey sandwich for a customer and I just collapsed, collapsed into tears. The most unlikely candidate, Kate from the sandwich shop in Reading, suddenly acting in one of the biggest movies ever made. But when she got the opportunity of a lifetime, she was overwhelmed with feeling worthless. We come now to a phenomenon called Titanic. Kate wrote in her diary, I feel ugly, talentless, and uncommitted, frightened, lonely, nervous, mad. By the end of this film, if it's not suicide, it'll be an asylum. It was Why? just the toughest film we ever had to make, and, and we were partners together, you know? We held each other's hand and supported each other. And the Oscar goes to Titanic. Right. Have either one of you been surprised about Titanic, its success so far? I was subjected to quite a lot of, of sort of personal physical scrutiny. I remember you actually saying to me one day, you know, you've really got to let the whole fat girl thing go. It's in the past, honey, you've got to let it go. There's definitely a moment after Titanic when there was, you know, quite a bit of pressure. This is it, you know, crest of the wave. This is the moment young actors dream of. And, Look at this incredible offer that's come in, and I was too scared. Kate couldn't push past the bullies. She felt as ugly as she was back in school. You turned down several big parts, I think, after Titanic. I just wanted to run away, actually. I really did want to just run away and do something small. I'm talking to the people who booked the guests on the show today, and they said that they had asked Kate Winslet to be on the show, and that she said no. Uh, she's saying no because she doesn't being appreciated called fat. And I was like, did, did I call her fat? Kate ran away from her dreams, ashamed of her body. When I grew up, I never heard positive reinforcement about body image from any female in my life. I only ever heard negatives, you know. That's very damaging because then you're programmed as a young woman to immediately scrutinize yourself and how you look. And when she gave birth to Mia, she had to think about what she wanted for her. Then I had my, my daughter and sort of, all of that sort of stuff kind of evaporated. You know, happiness, it, it isn't a search for, you know, facial or physical perfection. You know, it comes from inside. And so I stand in front of the mirror and say to Mia, we are so lucky that we've got a shape. We're so lucky we're curvy. You don't give a lot of thought to losing the pre-pregnancy body. You just kind of roll with it. I'm very proud of my marks and my scars and, and, and who I am becoming. And I want to be able to be true to those things. And it's important to me to continue to step into those real shoes and, and, and be 
absolutely myself. You just start to realize that, well, you know, you are the way you are and it's not worth spending, you know, 90 to 95 percent of the day thinking about how you look physically. I mean, really. Kate finally saw herself the way Leo always had and was ready to go after her dreams. Now, Leo and Kate are lighting up the big screen in their new film, Revolutionary Road. And how would you describe She's the changes in her? still as beautiful and radiant <laughs> as she was the day I met her. Leo, I'm so happy I can stand here and tell you how much I love you and how much I've loved you for 13 years. <laughs> Kate, love you, babe. Love Cracks you. again. Thank you, babe. I'm comfortable with all the imperfections that I have and I don't feel the need to hide any of those things because I do think it's very important that women on screen are portrayed as real women. And the Oscar goes to Kate Winslet. Before, I think I was probably eight years old, going into the bathroom mirror, and this would have been a shampoo bottle. Well, it's not a shampoo bottle now. <laughs> now Kate's daughter has the confidence she never had growing up. She's away just now, about to start work on a, on a little TV series a couple of years ago. She turned around and said, you know, I think I would like to give it a go. You know, any young woman who has ever been put down by a teacher or a friend or, or, or even a parent, just don't listen to any of it. So that other women know that it's okay to not have to feel like they need to be the version of that thing. I kept on going and I overcame all of my fears and I got over a lot of insecurity and, and just keep doing it and keep believing in yourself.